Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the launch of the New South Wales Public School Education Week for 2019. Today's official celebration, every student, every voice, will be truly reflective of the breadth of public education in New South Wales. As we come to you live from both Sydney and Dubbo, my name is Grace Gower and I'm in Year 12 and a school captain at Dubbo College Senior Campus. And I'm David Woods and I'm also in Year 12 and a school captain of Dubbo College Senior Campus. We'd like to extend a very warm welcome to the many students, staff, community, family and distinguished guests who have joined us here and in Sydney today. Thank you, Grace and David. You, Grace and David. My name is Elizabeth Braid and I am a Year 4 student of St Mary's North Public School. My name is Chloe Zrubiak and I am a Year 9 student from Chifley College, Dunhaven Campus. We would like to welcome everyone joining us online via the live web stream. We want to celebrate how New South Wales public schools are equipping young people with the skills and capabilities they need to thrive in a rapidly changing globalised world. We have some very special guests joining us today and we ask you all to please stand silently as they enter the auditorium. In Sydney, we would like to welcome the Honourable Gladys Berejiklian, MP, Premier of New South Wales. The Honourable Melissa McIntosh, MP, Federal Member for Lindsay. Mark Scott, AO, the New South Wales Department of Education Secretary. Glenn King, Secretary, New South Wales Department of Customer Service Commission. The Honourable Prue Carr, MP, State Member for Londonderry. Councillor Ross Fowler, OAM, Penrith City Council Mayor. Mrs Lisa Perello, Principal, St Mary's North Public School. In Dubbo, we welcome the Honourable Sarah Mitchell, Mitchell, Minister for Education. Mr Dougal Sanders, MP, Member for the Dubbo Electorate. Senator Ben Shields, Mayor of the Dubbo City Council. Dean White, Executive Director of School Performance, Rural and Southwest. Andrew Jones, Executive Principal, Dubbo College. Marisha Blanco, Principal, Dubbo College Senior Campus. Debbie Head, Principal, Dubbo College, Doro Campus. Linda McLeod, Principal, Dubbo College South Campus. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please remain standing for the acknowledgement of country delivered by Quincy Ross and Sky Crawford from Dubbo College Senior Campus. Joining them will be the Yu Young Galong Ind Indigenous Dance Group and Didgeridoo Players from Dubbo College Doro Campus. Following this, please remain standing for the National Anthem, performed by Carl Van Well, a Year 8 student from Newtown High School of the Performing Arts. At just 14 years of age, Carl is a young up-and-coming performer, pianist and singer, and has recently been selected to perform as a featured artist in the 2019 School Spectacular. But first, the acknowledgement of country. Hello and good morning. My name is Sky Crawford and I am a proud Barkindji woman. I'm currently studying Year 11 here at Dubbo College Senior Campus. Hello and good morning. My name is Quincy Ross. I'm a proud Tubbagar man from Radjuri Nation. I'm currently studying Year 12 here at Senior Campus. We are very honoured to be giving the acknowledgement to country from Dubbo, New South Wales, Australia. Sky will now give you the acknowledgement to country in Wiradjuri language. <laughs> Rajri Mangalang, Nagu, Nurubanga Nina, Nagira, Duranga, Gai. 
We would like to open today with an acknowledgement to the traditional owners of this country in which we meet. The old people from the past, the present, and particularly the keepers of the knowledge of a land and place. The knowledge that sustains our identities, health, cultures, and communities into the future. We acknowledge that this is traditional knowledge, that this knowledge has always been dynamic and evolving and continues to transform to meet the challenges of a changing world. Acknowledging country and first people in this way is an important protocol, but it means so much more if you understand the country you are standing on. To generally understand country, you need to understand the significance of place, the stories of the place and the people of that place. The acknowledgement has many different concepts. It's about recognising and respecting the Aboriginal people from the area or country where you are at the time, their culture, spirit ancestors, their heritage, and ongoing relationship with the land. It's all of these and more. So on behalf of the Department of Education, we would like to formally acknowledge the Tabriga people of the Rajri Nation and the Wayanamata people of the Dari country, which is where St Mary's North Public School, the other side of the Education Week launch is located in Sydney. I would also like to extend that acknowledgement to other nations living and working in this magnificent country. We would also like to acknowledge the work you all do to sustain our ongoing knowledge both inside and outside the classroom. Sky and I would like to pay our respect to Elders both past and present and hope the rest of the day here is spent safe and happy. Mandanga War. Thank you. Morangali. Morangali is about an eagle flying high in the sky watching a robbery. So he or she comes down to show everybody what he or she has got. Morangali means corroboree leader. This dance was given to us by Uncle Jamie McLennan. Morangali! 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 Gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to Dubbo College Senior Campus. Welcome to St. Mary's Lawn Public School. We're your Education Week hosts. Come on in. 
We have 380 students from a range of cultural backgrounds. One in four students identify as Aboriginal and this year we're proudly celebrating 60 years of public education. We're connected to our land and environment. And our culture. The other two pearls are and we play music every day because the Australian Chambers Orchestra and we love it. Here at Dunno College we have three campuses. At Senior we have 560 Year 11 and 12 students and 50 staff. And last year we celebrated 100 years of high school education in Dubbo. Dance is one of our biggest draw cards. It's our passion and it's part of our HSE. In our Strata Success Program, we are mentored on how to set goals and develop practical strategies on how to achieve them. Lessons aren't limited to just the classroom. Out here we fence, mark sheep and cattle and operate tractors and basic machinery. Thanks for coming! In our, it is now my great pleasure to invite to the Sydney stage the Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable Gladys Berejiklian, to deliver the official welcome to the 2019 New South Wales Public Schools Education Week celebrations. Good morning, everybody, and I am so excited to be here. Can I firstly thank Sky and Quincy for that wonderful welcome to country and also start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Can I also thank Carl for that wonderful rendition of the Australian anthem. Education Week is all about supporting our 2,200 schools across the state and acknowledging that students are our future, that students are what makes a difference uh, to the future of our state and our nation. Education for me, week for me is a very special time. It's a time when we remember how important it is to make sure that every child, whether they're at St Mary's North Public School or Dubbo College, has the chance to be their best. And I want to take this opportunity to thank students and teachers and staff at both these schools for, for officially launching Education Week. Can we give the two schools a round of applause? But we know these schools uh, really make a difference, but represent the 2,200 public schools across the state. And uh, when I was the age of some of the students that welcome me here today, I went to North Ryde Public School, then went to North Ryde High School, which later became Peterboard High School. So I know the benefits of receiving a high quality public education. And of course, Education Week is not just about celebrating our students, because what do we or students rely on? fantastic teachers and principals. And what inspires me as I have the absolute honour and privilege of visiting schools across the state is the number of inspiring teachers and principals that make a difference to the education outcomes we receive here in New South Wales. And I want to stress that we're a government, and I acknowledge Minister Mitchell, who's in Dubbo. Hello, Minister Mitchell. I uh, want to acknowledge uh, the Minister for Education because as a team, as a government, we are here to support our schools no matter where they are and no matter where they're located. And Education Week is not about just celebrating uh, student outcomes, but also for me as the Premier of New South Wales, I think about what more I need to do to make sure that our schools are the best on the planet. I've been very, heart, uh, very heartily received this morning and I want to thank all the schools participating in launching Education Week today and it gives us a chance to focus on what we're doing well and what are the other things we'd like to do in the future. It also focuses on making sure every student feels they have a voice and I acknowledge this year's theme about making students feel confident and empowered to really speak up and to be part of the broader community. So ladies and gentlemen, can I thank the many distinguished guests who are here today, including the federal and state members of parliament, to Mark Scott, the head of the education department, but across the state, to all the principals and teachers in PNCs that are the beating heart of our school communities. Without you, 
We wouldn't have a successful education week and we wouldn't have hundreds of thousands of students being inspired each and every day. And I feel inspired as your Premier to work even harder to acknowledge all the fantastic things that you are doing on behalf of the people of this state, but also think about what I can do to assist you in making sure that not only are our schools the best in the state or the nation, but the best in the world. So happy Education Week and thank you so much for having me here this morning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Premier. Your support acknowledges the high standing which public education is held in this state and the fine work which is completed every day by teachers and other staff at more than 2,200 public schools across New South Wales. Our next performance will be live on the Sydney stage. The St Mary's North Public School String Ensemble has recently enjoyed a partnership with the Australian Chamber Orchestra to benefit some of the youngest students from the school. This morning, these students will be, will be performing singing in the playground with members of the ACO. Now let's take a look at the impacts of this program. Music opens doors and I think it certainly provides them with a world that they might not have ever taken part in. We do have a high level of low socioeconomic advantage. We see around 70% of our students sitting in the bottom quartile. I was fortunate that I had this formative interaction with musical tuition in a way that led me to, to where I am. We have this elevated platform and if we don't give back to society, I think it's extraordinarily selfish. It's a civic duty to provide kids this access. The program is really at its core an intensive string playing program where we're using the mechanics of the string playing to develop other critical developmental skills in children. Every morning they come in and they practice for 15 minutes with the classroom teacher with video resources, materials and training. It's a co-teaching design between the instrumental teacher and the classroom teacher to make sure that the work that's happening in the music lessons is integrated through everything they do in the curriculum. No one immaculately conceives a sound on the violin. So immediately you're dealing with hard work, grit, and turning imagination into a reality. The research shows that if students could participate in a program like this, starting early with daily practice and continuing on for many years, that it's actually gonna have far-reaching other benefits for these kids. What we've seen in this little group of Year 1 students is we now have a group of students who are attending school in far higher numbers than the rest of the school population. It has improved their executive functioning, their working memory, their self-regulation, and we're seeing that in the classroom. Some of the children didn't even know what a cello or a violin actually was or what it looked like. It's been an honour for me to see how our kids have grown. Noah is a ball of life, but quite often can't sit still. For him to be able to recognise, you know, that there's a time and a place where we need to be composed is really lovely. I'm so proud of him and I know he is so proud of himself and all these kids when they play together, they just sound like magic. It's beautiful. That's what teachers look for, the magic.
I was shy when I was little, but school taught me how to not be shy and what can help you to get away from your fears of seeing new people. My favourite thing to do out here is play with my brother's dog, Frankie. You get to look outside the window and you can see your horses. School of the air is when kids live on stations, communicate over the air on computers and technology. We have a special computer that connects to the teacher's satellite, which helps us learn. It's really different to the town school because you don't have your teacher there the whole time. You don't see your friends, so it's more exciting when you do see them. For me, school is mostly a school camp when everyone gets together and meet up and do lots of activities. Also, the parents come to see what's happening and you also get to camp in a tent. It's important because you get to talk to your friends and your teachers face to face, but you also learn about particular things that helps you in the future. The school of the air is a way for children to come together. This launch is an incredible showcase of the talented students and their amazing teachers throughout New South Wales public schools. I would now like to welcome to the stage the Minister for Education, the Honourable Sarah Mitchell. Thank you and good morning everybody. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet uh, here in Dubbo, the Tupperwar people of the Wiradjuri Nation, and pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal people with us here today, including those with us in Sydney. Uh, thank you also to Quincy and Sky for your wonderful welcome. To hear you speak uh, in language of your local Aboriginal communities was very heartwarming and very inspiring indeed, so thank you. Uh, how wonderful it is to be here with you all celebrating the start of Education Week here in Dubbo. Uh, and hi to everyone at St Mary's North in Sydney, Premier, Secretary and the dignitaries there. Um, it's wonderful to be able to do this in both the city and the regions. I think that's so important that we can celebrate this week together. Special congratulations to the St Mary's North Public School uh, String Ensemble for your wonderful performance and also to the Australian Chamber Organ Orchestra. It's clearly a fabulous program and when I see things like that, you know, collaboration in education, it's so important and the work that you're doing is, is great to see uh, how our community is building our public schools to inspire and how our schools empower and provide students with opportunities that they may not normally be able to access. I'm so thrilled to be the Minister for Education. I think I've got the best job out of all of my colleagues because there's so many exciting things happening in public schools right across New South Wales. And I think this year's uh, Education Week theme, Every Student, Every Voice, is about more than just giving young people a say. It's about listening and valuing and encouraging our students' ideas and our opinions. So students, I want to talk to you a little bit now because I want you to know how important it is for us as a government to be investing in your education because you're our future. You're our future doctors and teachers and lawyers and farmers, and we need to make sure that you have the best education possible to be all that you can be. And that's something that we are absolutely dedicated to achieving with you and your teachers and those who are supporting you in your school and journeys. We're investing in you in many ways. Uh, our, our billions of dollars going into our school infrastructure upgrades, which means lots of new and innovative learning spaces for you and your teachers. Uh, the expansion of our Bump It Up program, focusing on wellbeing as well, because certainly for me as Minister, I know that it's important that you're happy and healthy in your school communities, because we know that that can impact your education. So a lot of the work that we're doing is putting you at the centre, making sure that your voices are heard. And I think that's important. We know that the best way for you to have a great start in life is to have a great education. And as the Premier said, we also need to support your teachers who do a wonderful job with you every day. Uh, lots of ways that we can do that through professional development, more support for them, helping to reduce their workload, which I'm sure the teachers will be happy about as well. Uh, and I have to say being here in Dubbo and, uh, and being a regional uh, student myself, proud former student of both Gunnedah South Public and Gunnedah High, uh, it's important I think today that we recognise and acknowledge how tough things are in our regional communities due to this ongoing drought. 
as many of us who live in the bush know, this drought is unprecedented. Uh, and no matter how hard we try, it does continue to affect many aspects of our local communities. But one of the things that's really important is to make sure that we maintain stability uh, and consistency for our regional students in our schools, particularly in certain parts of the state where we know that our families uh, may have to leave and we don't want that to affect our, our teacher numbers. So I'm really pleased to share with you all today at the start of Education Week uh, that our government will continue to maintain the current teacher numbers in hundreds of our regional schools that are worst affected by the drought for the next 18 months. And we're doing this because we want to support our regional communities. We're not going to walk away from our drought affected towns and communities. We want to make sure that every student continues to have a voice in their regional schools. Finally, can I just say that I'm so excited for all of the many activities that we have during Education Week. Obviously, the launch today is just the start of it. There's fantastic events happening at all of our schools right across the state, and I can't wait to see how our different communities bring this year's theme to life. Um, congratulations to everybody involved in the launch today. Uh, I'm excited for the, the week ahead, and I hope you all have a wonderful Education Week 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Georgia, our next performer, loves all genres of music from country to jazz and has attended solo vocal camp and the state music camp, all programs run by the New South Wales Department of Education Arts Unit. I now welcome Georgia Dalton, Year 10 student from Hillston Central School to the Dubbo stage to perform Gold, an original piece written by the talented Georgia herself. You're looking in the mirror, staring at yourself and wondering who you're going to be. Do you want to run that office in the city or a small town family? Do a couple of years if you're heading the books or maybe head overseas. You can do anything you want to do, be anyone you want to be. And it feels like you've got to know right now. Girl, take your time to breathe in and breathe out. Just lift your head up and smile and remember you're not alone. I'll stay for a while. I'll be right by your side. Don't be so hard on yourself. You've got nothing to be afraid of. Don't put your heart on a shelf. When you can show them that you're made of gold Show them that you're made of gold I bet you're thinking that you're the only one in this world who's got flaws But if you look around you'll realize that you're leaving everybody in awe you cry sometimes cause you feel like life is never going your way But if you work real hard and follow your dreams, everything will fall into place And it feels like you've got to know right now But girl, take your time to breathe in and breathe out Just lift your head up and smile and remember you're not alone i'll stay for a while i'll be right by your side don't be so hard on yourself you've got nothing to be afraid of don't put your heart on a shelf when you can show them that you're made of gold show them that you're made of gold I know it seems so hard to believe it but whatever you're feeling don't conceal it just lift your head up and smile and remember you're not alone I'll stay for a while smile and remember you're not alone. I'll stay for a while. I'll be 
right by your side. Don't be so hard on yourself. You've got nothing to be afraid of. Don't put your heart on a shelf. And you can show them that you're made of gold. 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 Thank you so much. Koeju Iku, Nata, Jura, Danban, Birbai Guri, Yi Birbai Barai, Yi Baraba Barai, Wanyabu Wanyabu, Ganyala, Wanyabu Wanyabu, Ganyi, Goi Wan Barai, Gatha Nyurun, Marumbu. Yi gatang guba bara, narling gatang yi narling bara. Speaking a tongue language gives me a voice and makes me proud to be an Aboriginal man. The concept of Wakli's kids connecting to country. Joylin gatang yi joylin bargal. We take the kids out and introduce them to a variety of different bush tucker. The Aboriginal students have definitely embraced their identity. We also have the non-Aboriginal kids wanting to um, wanting to learn more of the language and they, they connect with it. These kids, black and white, just rolling this language off their tongue and it's the most beautiful, prettiest sound. I'm here and I said, guys, if you only knew what joy I'm hearing. That's the environment that I try and create in my classes. Everyone has a voice in my room. And when they go back into school and, and face education and sit with other kids in class, they can know who they are and be proud of who they are. This year's Public Education Week theme, Every Student, Every Voice, is a celebration of student empowerment and how the New South Wales public education system gives students the skills they need in order to have and express a voice during their own educational journey and as engaged global citizens. I now welcome Georgia. Oh. Next, we will hear from Samantha Barton, a Year 12 student from Tumut High School, to share her voice about education in New South Wales public schools. Please welcome her to the Dubbo stage. Good morning. Here, celebrating Education Week in 2019, I've never had a greater appreciation for the last 13 years that I've spent in schools all around the state. I have attended public schools in both Sydney and regional areas. And now, at Tumut High School, I am set to undertake my HSC in a matter of months. A quality education has been the key for me, as it is for many others, to innumerable opportunities. And thankfully, we in New South Wales are fortunate enough to be supplied with a fine set of keys for unlocking all the doors to the future. I've been a lover of school since my very first day of kindergarten. And I can assure you that school isn't just where we begin the lifelong learning journeys that make each of us who we are today. It's also where, as individuals, we first learn the power of our own unique voices. And through my years at school, I am extremely grateful to have come into contact with so many of these unique voices from all across the state. In reflection, I find myself markedly moved and shaped by the broad range of formidable characters I have met. And although certain voices, those of the schoolmates who have become dear friends and the teachers who I have worked closely with have played a larger role in enriching my life, I know that even the voices I crossed paths with for just mere moments have molded me into the individual I am today. As a student, the power of the voice is immeasurable as we cultivate it first in the schoolyard and then employ its force in the wider world. 
your voice need not necessarily be the loudest, nor do you need to be heard all the time. In fact, taking the time to listen and understand others is just as crucial to authentically developing your voice. Whilst you may think you need to strike for change with each and every word, there is just as much potential in using your voice to support others, promote empathy, encourage kindness, and cultivate feelings of optimism. Here is where you find your real power. And while students are at the center of education, this week is not complete without a celebration of the teachers who help us grow and strive, relishing with us in our big and little successes as individuals. I am immensely appreciative of the heart and soul that the teachers at my school pour into their work. And I see my parents, both teachers themselves, pour tireless hours into the profession that they are so passionate about, with a genuine desire to work collaboratively with all their students and to help them to be heard. But I know that some students, particularly those in the state's smaller schools, the rural and remote schools, feel as if they and their school go unnoticed. For us, Position just a bit further from the stage, getting to the microphone so that our voice rings out loud and clear can be that little more difficult. But as I hope I am demonstrating here in Dubbo, as this week intends to demonstrate, what we have to say matters. And in an increasingly digital world, there are no limits to contribution and collaboration, as that is what enriches us all. So to all the students around the state, I reiterate, when we say every student, every voice, we really mean it. And we mean you. Your words can move mountains. And if we listen to each other, there is no limit to what we can achieve. Thank you. We are educated and we are informed. All the learning that we do at school, I think that helps us to be able to express ourselves. My years through primary school and high school, I've learned so much and become so aware to the world and the problems we're facing. It's been really great seeing how many kids are really passionate about the environment. Young people, particularly teenagers, aren't apathetic and they do care. As people become aware to this, they realise that young people need to be included in the conversation and being able to show kids that this is possible is really powerful. You don't need to make change on a massive scale to be able to make a difference. Within your school, like having recycling programs or starting an environment club, and it's when lots of people do all these little things that together we're able to make a big change. Students at St Mary's North Public School recently participated in a slam poetry workshop. This workshop, developed by the New South Wales Department of Education with a literary arts organisation, Word Travels, allowed students at the school to develop their art of slam poetry and develop and create a spoken word performance which was delivered at their school showcase. Tyler Price, 10 years old and in Year 5, and Amalia Bradney, 11 years old and in Year 6, both from St Mary's North Public School, will now share with us their slam poetry performance. We now cross back live to Sydney with This Is Who I Am. This is who I am. My school. My neighbourhood. Where, where I'm, I'm from. from. At St Mary's North. Public. We acknowledge the Darug. My people. Our, Our kids are. Wan Kamara. Camillary. Darug. Hey, that's me. Gumbury, Panjilong and more. We, we say Aya Yella Balarai con leche por favor. Magaya. That's a mixture of Maltese, Syrian Arabic. That's me. Spanish and Samoan. Four. Hurry hurry. Cup of tea with milk, please. Nice. nice. Now, what could be more Aussie than a cuppa? I love to eat rabra. Vine leaves stuffed with rice, minced meat and more spices than I can remember. I'm all about that all-you-can-eat-leagues club buffet. <laughs> this is who I am. 
Where I'm from. My school. My neighborhood. It's Community Junction with Lego Club and making glitter slime. Kim's Fish and Chips with Chicken Salt. Okay, with Chicken Salt. It's bike jumping in the park with the kangaroos. Fred the Emmy at Whalem Reserve. A mural of a bushwalker stalked by a Penrith Panther. This is who I am. My neighbourhood. Where I'm from. My school. school. Inflatable obstacle course. Movie night. The Topia. Our, Our school is a rainbow mosaic. Filled with dozens of colourful parents and teachers. Carers and kids. Everybody, everybody let's hear you all repeat after us. Let every student, every voice. Be heard. Be heard. Happy, Happy Education, Education Week. In celebration of Education Week 2018, the department launched an exciting initiative called the Game Changer Challenge, a three-day competition for 16 schools from across New South Wales where they learnt about and used design thinking to solve a real world problem. Due to its overwhelming success, the challenge is back and bigger than ever in 2019. My name is Caleb Chin and I'm in year six at Okojai Public School. My school has entered this year's challenge and progressed through to the finals, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> this year, teams were faced with the question, how might we humanize technology? My name is Ella Colville and I'm in year 11. In 2018, my team from Helston Agricultural High School was lucky enough to be selected for the inaugural challenge, which posed the question, what will a school of the future look like? After assembling our team of six students and two teachers, we created a video submission and were then accepted into the next stage of the challenge. During the three-day workshop, we worked with industry experts to develop our design thinking and new skills like teamwork and critical and creative thinking, all in order to create our pitch for the final day. My team's pitch was a virtual reality program where students developed and demonstrated ethical and moral understandings to become better global citizens. We were awarded the runner-up accolade, and I think that's pretty cool. Since then, I have been able to utilize my skills I gained from the challenge in many situations within and beyond the classroom, and I know that I will continue to do so in the future. Let's take a look at what the 2019 challenge is all about. In response to this year's question, my team from Okio Drive Public School created a watch that could communicate with other people and facilities around the school, including our buddy bench, where the watches would match compatible students to help create friendships and support one another. Our team works all together on the video submission and use mixed reality and green screens to bring our ideas to life. My team is super excited to participate in the Game Changer Challenge this year. We even get to go to Google HQ. Wow. So from today, teams will converge at Parramatta to begin the 2019 challenge. This year, another new team from Helston Agricultural High School will also participate. I wish them, Caleb's team, and all other participating teams the best of luck. I hope that the experience is just as rewarding for them as it was for me. And we hope that in 2020, your school will participate in the Game Changer Challenge. It's, it's awesome. awesome. <laughs> we are educated and we are informed. All the learning that we do at school, I think that helps us to be able to express ourselves. 
it is so important for our voices to be heard is because it opens up a conversation to the stigma surrounding young voices. If we're given a voice, all these possibilities are open and the possibilities are endless. Would you now please join me in welcoming to the stage the Secretary of New South Wales Department of Education, Mark Scott, to deliver his closing remarks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what an exciting hour we've had together as we've been preparing and celebrating the start of Education Week. I want to thank the Premier and our guests here in, uh, at St Mary's North and I want to thank the Minister for Education and our distinguished guests out at Dubbo and thank you all for being part of this extraordinary event today. I want to thank the Australian Chamber Orchestra for their wonderful support of this uh, innovative program that we have here at St Mary's North. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the Arts Unit who've done all the work with our schools here at St Mary's and at Dubbo uh, to prepare for this wonderful celebration of Education Week. And a particular thank to our, thanks to our principals uh, here and at Dubbo for opening up their doors to uh, uh, all of us to come and celebrate Education Week with you uh, uh, here. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this year we're celebrating every student, every voice, and it's wonderful to come to an event like this that showcases all the very best we have in public education. But I think the great achievement of public education isn't that we can put a wonderful program on like we've been able to do today or have a special week of celebration as we have an education week, but it's what's happening in our schools every day. We have a commitment in New South Wales public education that every student, every teacher, every leader, every school improves every year. We have a commitment in public education that if you send your child to a New South Wales public school, your child will be known, valued and cared for in our schools. And so the great miracle of public education isn't just great showcase events like today, it's the miracle that happens every day with young people engaged in learning and on a pathway to fulfil all their potential and to be all that they can be. So I want to thank the hosts of uh, today's great celebration. I want to thank the students who've showcased their wonderful talent. I want to thank the teachers who've supported them and made it all possible. But I want to thank all of those who are watching or who are involved in our 2,200 schools that make the wonder of education engagement take place every day. And I want to thank you all for being part of it. Thanks to all who've organised, thanks to all who've been involved, and thanks for, again to the students who've showcased such wonderful talent. And we have one more performance for us today. The final showcase is the Quakers Hill East Boys Hip Hop Ensemble, together with three of the 2019 students uh, from the School Spectacular, the featured artists, Rui, Liam and James. Will you welcome them to the stage? Get up out of bed and say we get it on the 
on the internet and checking out who hear me get up. Third shot, pimp shot, walking, a little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious, somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby, but I gave nothing up, y'all can't copy us, bad. Move up, in this key, it's our party, my posse been on Broadway, yeah we did it all way, now they can't tell me nothing. We give it to the people, spread it across the country, here we go back, this is the moment, tonight is the night, we'll fight till it's over, so we put our hands up. My, 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 my music hits me so hard, makes me say, oh my lord, thank you for blessing me with a mind too run and too high for the good to know you're down, super dope, I'm from the old town and I'm moving as such, and this is a beat, uh, you can't touch, now break it down, oh, oh, oh. Thank you to all our audience members, presenters and performers in both Sydney and here in Dubbo. And a special shout out to the incredible team that put this dual site launch together. Everybody. Everybody. See, you. See, you. See you all next year.